Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 134 of the WNO Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Sears. Sitting next to me, Reed Connell. You What's guys up, everybody? may not have seen me for a while. I was on the show for the first 90 episodes and just took 40 of them off. Now Reed's <laughs> going to be a regular co-host with me. Hell yeah. And really I'll, excited. Excited to do this. Jump in uh, who's number one with you, Michael, for sure. Why don't you introduce our third co-host that we have? Absolutely, man. This is uh, not just Michael and I. we got a true all-star cast here, Michael, myself. And, of course, we're going to introduce back there, Corey. He's the newest member of Flow Grappling, but uh, been out there killing it. So excited to uh, to talk to everybody. This is gonna be a fun little podcast, man. I'm excited. Yeah, especially. I mean, uh, we're talking about we want to deep dive into the stuff going on with the uh, who's number one in the WNO events, and there's a lot of news on that, right? We just announced yesterday the main event: uh, Craig Jones versus Ronaldo Jr. Huge, huge event. You know, this last 2020, you know, we kind of birthed this uh, who's number one event. It was a wild, wild ride, of course, for everybody. 2020 was a, a crazy ride, but uh, through the the pandemic and everything like that, came this uh, this event and, and this stuff that we're doing. Who's number one? And man, what a fun and wild ride 2020 was! And I can't wait to see where this thing goes in in. 2021. Yep, Nicky Ryan as well was announced today. Uh, we're going to announce his opponent tomorrow. So if you guys are watching this on uh, live, you can interact with us through the uh, Facebook and YouTube comment sections. But also, Corey is going to be manning the uh, app on the Flow Grappling app. So if they're going to be doing polls on there. If you want to submit questions, we'll answer questions at the end of the show. But uh, yeah, Corey, what do you think about this this Who's Number One event coming up, this Craig versus Ronaldo match? I mean, the, the, the main event, it looks insane. It, it's... I, I, with uh, with with Craig Jones' leg lock, leg lock pedigree and with Ronaldo's insane passing, I, I, there's no way this is going to be a boring boring match, right? It's going to be explosive. Corey's a, a great leg locker. His, uh, he's kind of like our resident leg locker um, himself. So excited to have Corey kind of dive into some of uh, some of those leg lock stuff. We're having Nikki and and Craig. We're going to need your expertise, Corey. <laughs> so Nikki, our uh, Corey, why don't you kick off the first poll about uh, who, who Nikki Ryan uh, should fight, if there's not enough people in there. Right, let's get that up and running. Yeah, so we're going to announce that tomorrow at noon Eastern, who Nikki Ryan's going to fight. So Nikki and Craig on a, on a card, of course, that's always going to be fun. But, man, this main, this main event, Craig versus Ronaldo. I mean, this is – Ronaldo's sort of wild, man. Nobody wants to fight these guys. Ronaldo was going to fight Gordon, no time mm -hmm, limit. Mm -hmm. 40, 50 pounds lighter, he's going to fight him, no time limit. Now he's going to fight Craig. Ronaldo just doesn't care, man. He's ready to throw down. Absolutely love Ronaldo Jr. If you guys aren't familiar with him, you know we've been watching Ronaldo since he was a, a purple belt on the scene, killing people. Um, and I uh, love his style. He never takes a, a backward step, you know. And I think that's the type of of match that suits Craig Jones so well. He, he sometimes has a problem um, with getting guys to engage in that type of thing. And um, Ronaldo is a dude who just kind of throws caution to the wind. Usually, it seems like right, and just uh, goes out there. He's a furious passer. He loves to to pass the guard, which is great because because Craig's kind of more of a a guard player. But uh, hey, man, I'm a I'm a big big fan of Ronaldo Jr. And and uh, I like his chances in this match for sure. He 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 didn't look bad against Wagner. Remember, uh, Gordon pulled out with COVID, and then he ended up fighting Wagner. And Wagner's sort of a nogi specialist. Ronaldo's a gi guy. Everybody thought that. It, and Wagner was going to kill him, but Ronaldo looked really good. It was it was a very close match. Super, super close. Kind of right up until like the very end, I, I feel like maybe kind of um, towards the very end, Wagner pull, pulled through. I'll have to go back and wa watch that match. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, Ronaldo, and, and I got to talk to him kind of before that, after that. He was super disappointed not to be fighting Gordon Ryan, which I feel like is is not the normal um, response <laughs> when when fighting Gordon Ryan, right? But um, you know, and I got to talk to him afterwards, like I said, and and uh, man, this is a guy who's like, man, I don't care who I fight, I want the challenges. I'm here to be the best, like you know, whether, whether it's Gordon or whether it's, if it's Wagner or Cyborg or Craig or whoever, like Ronaldo didn't care. This dude didn't care who who he was gonna fight. All he wants to do is prove that he's the best. And that's what he should be doing, right? Like that, that's the thing I was saying the other day. If you're over 185 pounds and you're a, a no gi grappler, you should be trying to beat Gordon Ryan. Mm -hmm, like, what mm -hmm. else is going to make you a star more than beating Gordon Ryan? I mean, maybe the next best thing is beating Craig Jones. These are the guys who Ronaldo's going after. He's headhunting for the biggest names of the sport, and that's what it's all about, right? Like, not picking the easy ones. He's he's going for it, and he's he's going to become a star because of it. Yeah, he's a young guy, you know. Um, he's on on the come up. We've we've done some stuff. He trains there at Atos Jiu Jitsu, the the be, you know one of the very best rooms, if not the best room in the entire country uh, you know he's got great training partners you know he's he's got uh, you know that that level of, of type of guys to push him to beat somebody like a Gordon or, or a Craig you know so I think you know if, if people are counting Ronaldo out for this one um, you know I, th I think he's, he's gonna he's gonna prove some people wrong 
Corey, what do you think about uh, the leg lock situation? A yeah. lot of guys at, at Atos have had, like JT, Gavall, they've had a, uh, they've made a career out of not getting leg locked by people uh, while playing on top. How do you think Ronaldo stays away from Craig's leg entries, and how do you think he does there? Right, well, and exactly like you say, the, the Atos team has done a really good job of, you know, maybe they don't have the best active leg lockers in the world, but they're definitely some of the, the best as far as defending and staying mm. out of leg lock mm. positions. Um, Ronaldo's never, he's been submitted once. He's never lost via leg lock. Now, you could say that that's because he hasn't done a whole lot of submission only. It, you know, most of his no-gi experience is in the IBJJF world. But yeah, I, I think that most of the Atos camp has developed a system to keep their legs safe. And, and it, it could throw, throw some trouble at Craig. Um, I mean, we've talked about Craig's biggest weakness being defending his back. Mm. Um, and if, if we know that pathway going in, uh, Kynan was one of the last guys to take Craig's back. Um, Off I, of the leg entry, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm. And that's that's always where he leaves himself open. So I think that they'll definitely be trying to capitalize on that. Yeah, it's a good point. It's an interesting point. You, you know, so many times, uh, Gary Tonin, obviously one of the best leg lockers in the world, he's fought JT uh, so many times. And, and and you're right, he's never leg locked him. And never, you know, a lot of those guys are, are do have that really... Um, I don't know the answer for a lot of those leg entanglements, especially you know when they're passing on top. So it's an interesting point. Yeah, but the same story that we said going into Craig versus Roberto is like if you open up against Craig, it can lead to problems, which is why people typically don't do that, right? That's yeah. why we see people Craig having to sort of butt scoot and chase after people a lot. But I mean, Ronaldo stands up passing; he's going to come after him. So, I mean, 15 minutes is a long time to keep Craig from getting in on one of those entries because mm-hmm. these guys, these DDS guys, are highly efficient once they get in there, right? They get in there. And, and they don't just play around, they get in there and break something. Yeah, and Ronaldo knows. He knows what, what Craig's going after, right? So so you have to think that he's going to be even more ready for it than uh, than he would be just, just regularly. So, you know, a lot of question marks, certainly, in, in this matchup. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Corey, what kind of uh, – I think you had some stats from your, your research for articles. What kind of what kind of stats can you tell us about this, this matchup here? Yeah, so one thing we've been talking a lot about in this match is kind of the, the Atos-DDS rivalry. Um, something interesting I, I found was that since, like, if we go back to 2015, um, Atos and DDS are tied in matches against each other. They're they're nine for nine. Um, so I think that th- that puts a lot on the line in this match. This is kind of a a, a tie breaking match. And you know, if if you go in thinking that Craig is going to walk right through Ronaldo, I think there's a lot of pride on the line in this. Mm. What what are some big like um, Atos versus DDS? Like obviously Gary versus um, JT co- comes to mind. Folks fought Gordon a couple times. Folks fought Gordon. Well, there's been all these guys in the, in the last year. It's been a bunch of the new next generation, right? right? Ty and, and Cade and Ethan and and, and so Mickey. that's that's one of the interesting things is that Atos not only has the lead in the last year, they shut out DDS last year. Wow. Atos went four and zero against DDS members. Wow, and that's it, big. It, it was all like Ruto- It was all the Rutolo brothers, correct? Uh, it was three Rutolo brothers and Hulk beat. Uh, Oliver Taza. So both the Rotolo brothers were at who number one when they beat uh, Ethan and uh, Nick. Nick. You say what you want about that Cade versus Ethan match, but, it, I mean, it count, counts as a W. Yep. Hulk beat Taza at, at uh, Subversive. Subversive, and okay. Ty beat Taza at Third, Third Coast. Coast. Okay. Gotcha. Wow. I mean, that that's kind of crazy, to be yeah. honest. 4-0, uh, Atos versus DDS in 2020. I didn't put that together. Yeah, four-match winning streak. I, I would have never guessed that. I mean, yeah. 18 matches against each other. So here, this is kind of like a rubber match in match 19, so it's pretty interesting. But Okay, okay. You, you got to like your chances with, with Craig in there and Ronaldo. You know, both putting their kind of A-team guys out there. Let's see where the, the chips fall here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and it, and it goes all the way to the top, right? Like this rivalry has been going on forever. Like it basically, it starts at the top. Yeah, almost. I, I, it started like it started at uh, the first time I basically started hearing about Gordon Ryan was when he was calling out people for cash matches online, and it's like he started going after Gov out right away. Yeah, and like, what was he even a black belt yet? You know, maybe you just got got. It was like 175 belt. pounds or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way back in the day, a different world. But uh, yeah, I mean, people forget about that. That Gordon's been calling out. Um, Andre Galvao for for you know five six years it feels like he's he's been calling him out for a, for a long long time and um, that rivalry specifically between between those two Gordon versus um, Galvao you know it, it's something that we could possibly see in the future at ADCC which would be just absolutely insane that would really put the uh, Atos versus DDS rivalry on the map if if it's not already but uh, yeah you got to remember that that it really started with with Gordon calling out Andre and now here five years later. It's the biggest rivalry in the sport. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think without question, the top two teams right now in, in Nogi grappling. And then I mean, you got Gary and JT. Gary Gary uh, lost to JT in the semis at two, who's number ones in a row. You got Hulk 
and kind and are, are definitely not friends with Gordon. It doesn't seem like not 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 too friendly. <laughs> nope. You got the whole Hinger and Craig Jones thing that which we know about when I mean, we found out about that in the Who's Number One podcast. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of rivalries on here for the 18 times that they've they've met on the mat. They've thrown down a whole bunch more times on Instagram. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, I, it spills over. Gordon and those guys are, are so good at the at the social media. And, um, I, man, I, I hope we can see more of these matches. I, I want to see more of Hulk, see more of Gordon. And, I, you know, I definitely want to see that Gordon versus Galval matchup. I hope that happens. Speaking of Gordon, uh, something that's really exciting leading up to this one, we, we got Gordon on there. We got Nikki, his, his brother, we announced today. Yeah. We're going to be going out to Puerto Rico. Man, can't, can't believe it. Can't yeah. believe it. it's gonna be crazy. Um, obviously, big big story, big news. You, Michael broke the news when they uh, when they moved to Puerto Rico back. Uh, when was that? When did they move? Three months ago. Yeah, a couple two, months, two ago. months ago. Two months ago. Two months ago. Moved to Puerto Rico. Um, you know, really was been looking forward to going down there. You know, ever since it, it came out that they're moving to Puerto Rico. And um, yeah, you know, just a couple weeks here. Michael and I gonna be going down there, getting all the content, filming some films, filming some uh, some hype for this upcoming event and whatnot. But man, I cannot wait to, to go down there, like just to see what those guys have been doing. Uh, they got the gym. I want to go some do some uh, waterfall hikes and stuff like that. But uh, it looks like a paradise down there. Going going back a little bit to uh, Atos versus DDS, I, I was just thinking, just popped in my head right now. It, it seems like no matter who wins this one, the logical next step is to is to keep that going because it's like Hanaldo wants that Gordon match. If he beats Craig, that makes True. sense. And True. then Craig, I mean, if he goes out and beats Hanaldo, I'm sure he'd like to run it back with Kynan. We've tried to set up him and Hulk a couple times on who's number one. COVID ruined that. It's another match we lost to COVID. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think I think this is going to be a stepping stone to more Atos DDS. I think we're going to be looking at that for a while. I think you can see Nikki and Ty, you know, go against each other, uh, you know, many times in the future. Both those guys so young, you know. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be in similar weight weight divisions going going forward. They both, they're both growing. Yeah, they both seem like they're they're going to be big guys. I'm even excited about that uh, that that uh, potential Gary tie match. Mm. Yeah, how could we forget that one? That's a perfect one. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah, a mega true. match. Yep. True. I love love the spirit of that. Love that Ty call it calls him out. Kind of almost like every time we put a camera in his face at this point, he's calling Gary out, which yeah. I love. And Gary wants it. Gary's just he's got MMA to focus mm -hmm. on. When it, whenever Gary's got a uh, you know. A window to compete. Yeah. We're going to be seeing Gary versus Ty for sure. And which is, that's so badass of Gary. You know, Gary has, in, you know, not too long ago was in this situation where he was calling out guys and, and people were, were turning him down left and right. So awesome to see kind of uh, Gary, you know, um, pay, pay it forward almost or, or, or t pay it forward for, to the guys coming up yeah. after him and, and whatnot. Well, Gary, I, I think he sort of thinks like that because yeah. after, after yeah. he got the number one spot, uh, in the rankings, in the, in the welterweight rankings, I was talking with with Jeff, their agent. And he's like, "Hey, we, we're not trying to be, you know, an absent number one because Gary had to deal with that for a while. Where the, yeah. the guys ranked ahead of him weren't really competing. Nobody, nobody wanted to yeah, fight him. Gary's, yeah, Gary's got that number one spot. He's going to defend it whenever he can. Love it, love it. And not only is he defending his number one spot in in uh, jujitsu, but you know, he's also number one. You know, he's going to be a number one guy in MMA too soon. So he's like, you know, doing it." In, in both both sports, it's it's incredible. Love Gary. Tony. Yeah, so we're looking at we just rattled off about a dozen high profile Atos versus DDS matches, and I think the idea is the climax of all this is Andre versus Gordon in 2022, right? Andre versus Gordon 2022. What do you think, Corey? You think we see it? I hope we see. It. I mean, everybody does, right? Yeah, yeah. That that's definitely the the big one. So you know, from when uh, Gordon, I mean, uh, Galval when he beat. Uh, Felipe Pena, and he, and he like ran up to the camera, and he was like, "Stop talking shit," you know. Like, yeah. I just felt like it was right. Even from that moment, we were we were setting up 2022 or, or 2021. Well, I think everybody thought Andre was going to retire then. Like, yeah. and then he said he wanted to do the stare down. I remember I ran and grabbed Gordon, and Gordon goes, "Wait, isn't he retiring?" Like, every everybody thought that he was done. But yeah, I mean, Galvao doesn't age. What he was probably 38 when he won that last one. Th 38, yeah. So he's going to be 40 plus. He might even be 41 by the time 2022 comes around. But you know, we still don't know exactly when that tournament's going to happen. Um, so he could be potentially 41 by the time that happens. Who you know, knows? Who knows? We'll one thing that pops into my head is, is this like the 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 modern day Buchecha Roger Gracie? Mm. Like it's a match that everybody's been looking forward to for so long, right? We we want to make sure that this match doesn't happen in 2024 when mm -hmm. when it's like at this point it's now it doesn't matter who wins. Yeah, I, mean, I think that it's got to happen, man. It's it's gonna hurt if we don't get to see that one. So I think before we move on from this. I think we got to go through and and pick our winners for for Craig versus Hinaldo. I I I think we're all going to all be in agreement on this one. Uh, no offense to Hinaldo, but he's got to be the big underdog in my eyes. Props to him for coming out and doing it. We know he's going to put out a fight. And but hey, if he goes out and he wins this thing, this could be a star making 
type of situation, like when Craig beat Leandro Lowe and Murillo at ADCC, just a few. It, it, it's strange that that was just what four years ago. I know. And I mean, Craig's a veteran now, mm-hmm. established veteran. But it's like if Ronaldo comes out and and beats Craig, that would be that level of win where it's like, all right, you're a big star now. But I'm going to have to go with Craig Jones winning this one, especially under this rule set. Who you think he uh, by submission or? I'm going to say 15 minutes is a long time for Ronaldo to keep those legs safe. I don't think he, I don't think his his knowledge of, of the leg lock game and, this, and the positions is going to. Be, I mean, Dan Hurt, even if you know that stuff, the Dan, the DDS is, is ahead of everybody. I mm-hmm. mean, Craig's really efficient, really tight when he gets there. I, I think we're going to see Craig probably inside heel hook. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely can see that happening for sure. Um, I, you know, I don't I don't mind taking Ronaldo at all here. You know, I think just with the level that he's at and um, what's at stake in this match, like we've just been talking about, the the Atos versus DDS rivalry. You know, I think um, those guys, you know, may, might not say it, but and uh, and it might not look like it, but but uh, they take that stuff personal. They they know these these stats just like just like we do. I think um, it's a big rivalry. I think the entire team is going to be out there um, helping helping Ronaldo make sure that he knows, you know, not to leave his uh, legs behind and stuff like that. And like Corey mentioned earlier. Um, Craig, it's not impossible for, for Craig to get his back taken. And, you know, if you watch Ronaldo, the guy is quick. The guy is incredibly quick. Athletic, man. Extremely athletic. Um, super fun to watch jujitsu. Um, you know, I he doesn't think, get tired. It doesn't seem like either. He keeps going and doesn't get tired. That's he, the thing. Exactly. A lot of guys got one or two, three big bursts in, in a 10-minute match. It's like he's the, a burst the entire time. Exactly. That's his MO. He's a young guy. He's got that gas tank. You know, I... Um, I I think that this was too big of a match for for those guys to to um, to lose. I, I like I like Ronaldo to to pull off the upset here for sure. Maybe not by um, submission, but um, but I think he's definitely capable of beating Craig for sure. All right, I got Craig by by inside the hook. Reed, Reed sounds like it's uh, Ronaldo by decision. I'll take Ronaldo by decision. All right, Corey, what are you thinking? I, I've got to lean on the numbers here. I, uh, Ronaldo is. three and three in his nogi career as a black belt. He's zero oh and three in matches where heel hooks are legal. He hasn't been heel hooked, but every time heel hooks have been part of the equation, he's lost. Uh, I, I've got to take Craig Jones on this via heel hook. I, I think that's the most logical conclusion. I would love to see Ronaldo prove me wrong, um, but I, I, th- I think that's where I'm going. All right, so there we have it. Two, two to one for Craig. Uh, now I don't think really a big surprise. Uh, Connor, anybody anybody chatting, give, given their, uh, their... We also have a fourth person in the room here, Connor. We don't have a camera on him, though, so <laughs> you won't see him. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. But, uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a crazy match, man. That's what, Love it. That's what Who's Number One is all about. We don't want to just put people on who are good at jiu-jitsu. We want to put people on that are exciting. That's ex- that's important, right? This is entertainment. We want to see who has the better jiu-jitsu. Yeah, we want people who are coming after and not just trying to survive. And these two guys are going to get after it, just like when R- Roberto fought Craig. We knew Roberto was going to go after him. I think you guys are going to be really excited for this upcoming match announcement tomorrow, Nikki Ryan, that's going to be at noon Eastern tomorrow. But for uh, our next little segment here, we're going to go into Reed's going to introduce some content he's made on the road with one of these athletes. Reed, why don't you introduce it? For sure, yeah. And, and going forward with the Who's Number One show, you know, we, we do a lot of these content trips and stuff like that. And so we want to make sure that this that the Who's Number One desk here is, is where you guys can see uh, a lot of this, you know, the Puerto Rico content coming up. And, and you know, when we go to California or Miami or wh- wherever it is in the future, we want to make sure that this this Who's Number One podcast, you, you guys are seeing that be- that content first. And, and the best content possible there. So, so we're going to be playing a lot of these clips from these trips as we go and whatnot. The clip that we're going to play right now is from a, a trip that I did, I believe it was last year, to New York. Um, and this is on the steps of Madison Square Garden. Got to interview uh, Craig Jones. You know, uh, been been following Craig's career like we were talking about earlier for a long time. And um, just to see him go out there in t- 2017, you know, Back in 2017, not many people knew who Craig Jones was, and then he burst onto the scene in uh, ADCC 2017, became a huge star. Uh, now, you know, he, he's at the t- he's at the top of the world. So this is a little little interview I did with Craig um, about last year, talking about uh, upcoming ADCC and talking about um, what it's like to train in New York. Of course, all these guys they're down in, in Puerto Rico now, but uh, it's a unique room. So let's see what uh, what Craig's got to say about it. Is it surprising to you that, that you landed landed here at all all places? Um, well, it's probably the mo- it's probably the style I tried to most copy when I was coming up, and uh, even in the yeah. gi. And I think it was probably detrimental to me in the gi. I was always trying to finish people. I would uh, always either get a 
a triangle trick, usually that's all I would do in the gi, or I would lose on points. And I would always watch these guys, and basically like Gordon Ryan's submission rate and stuff, that's what I want to be. I don't want to ever beat a guy by two points, hold on for my life and cheer. Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that if that's the strategy you play, because it, it's within the rules and it's, a, and it's uh, you still won according to the rules. Mm -hmm. But I want to be out there finishing everyone, trying to finish everyone. And I guess that's the style these guys do the most. And I guess that's the reason why probably a lot of guys don't want to accept matches against these guys. It's one thing you want to accept a match against the guy that you might be on two points. It's like, that sucks, but you lost. Yeah. It's another thing if a guy comes out, is trying to kill you, submit you, dominate you. So I guess I'm trying to copy these guys' style. So it's probably the best place for me to prepare for a, a tournament like ADCC. Plus, not very many Westerners, I guess, have won ADCC. And uh, I guess these yeah, are the, one of the few teams where they got like Gordon Ryan to it that has won it. Was it inspiring to see Gordon do what he did in 2017? You know, you, you trained with him quite quite a bit, and you competed against him also quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, you know, you, you, you were there every, every day in the gym. You were there every day in the gym with him. Is it inspiring to, to see Gordon do what he did? Yeah, for sure. Because I think a lot of people see how jacked he is, <laughs> and they want to say that um, he's he's dominating for that reason. But the reality is, he's probably every bit as technical as he is jacked. Gotcha. And I guess this is where the sport's heading, where there's like real athletes coming into the sport, and not just real athletes coming into the sport, but guys that are really technical too. So it, it is always inspiring. I don't want to uh, give the uh, gringos versus Brazilians rivalry a boost, but uh, having come up in the sport, it can sometimes be hard sure. to be included into the fold with the, uh, some of the Brazilian community sometimes. So it's, uh, I always love seeing a gringo do well. It gives us confidence as uh, fellow gringos doing well in the sport. <laughs> Australian Jiu-Jitsu. AJJ. <laughs> that's what it Australian right? Jiu-Jitsu, the film that's coming next. Uh, it's a sequel. Reed, you've basically been working with Craig ever since he got known, right? You were there in Finland when he made his name. For sure, man. I mean, um, Craig is, is um, somebody who wasn't really on our radar there. Um, going into ADCC 2017, you know, he won the trials, um, you know, obviously he was a great, had a great name as a, you know, kind of up and coming Australian um, brown belt, black belt. But, you know, I don't think really we expected him to be like an elite competitor, uh, especially that year, 2017 ADCC. I even remember like when they posted the brackets because the ADCC, they basically just write out the brackets, you know, and then they just like taped them to the window and Leandro Lowe walked up to the to the window looking at the brackets and he looked at me and he was like craig jones he was like you know do you know who that guy is like leandro Lowe had no idea and i was like yeah he's an australian guy like you'll be fine the trial is winner who usually gets sacrificed to the big names in the first round. exactly exactly the, the specific um asia trial winner european trial winners they usually go up against the um, number one seed or the or the previous winner that that year so craig got matched up against leandro and and shocked everybody man i mean that was like one of the funnest matches one of the funnest moments from the entire tournament or from from my ADC, ADCC experience, just to see that dude grow into, um, you know, the, the jiu-jitsu celebrity that he is, is awesome for sure. Yeah, he's a hell of a guy too. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's he's pretty humble. So and jiu-jitsu is so much fun to watch, you know. And I mean, he took he first you know broke Leandro's leg there, and then took his back off of it, and then flying triangle Marillo, yeah. you know. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my god. Right. And he's got the and then the the next you know um, the following ADCC, he's got the sick guillotine on on Mason, and and you know Craig's a submission hunter, man. It's that, super fun to watch. That's exactly what I mean. The advice I would give to any young athletes coming up is it doesn't matter how much you win, it's how you went. Mm -hmm. Craig went there to ADCC, and I think he took fourth and became a huge megastar out of that thing just because of the way he's 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 going out there. He's getting after. He's trying to finish people. If you're just trying to go out and win ref decisions, I mean, you're not going to become as well known as somebody else who's who's going for the, the the sub all the time. The modern day Eddie Bravo, really, right? Like you know, he didn't win, but uh, man, who who remembers who won '88 that year? Nobody. No, I'm just kidding. It was Gordon won that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, something that we wanted to uh, add in here. For the, the new formula for this show is some rankings talk, some rankings discussion. The Nogi rankings are sort of integral to the who's number one thing. We've we've changed all the weight classes so that they're the weights that we're going to use for who's number one that we're going to eventually probably crown champions in and everything. So we have it's basically the same as the UFC without a 125 division. But this one that we wanted to talk about today is uh, the the middleweight division, 185 pounds. If you want to pull that up, uh, Tyler. So I mean. 
this is a pretty wide open division. Something that's interesting here is that Craig could probably make this division. He has told me that he could make it for the right for the right, right weight. He's he's meeting Ronaldo at 195 in between each other. But Roberto's number one, who Craig has tapped yep. recently in October mm-hmm. at right? who's number one. Wagner Hosha, number two, a guy who's a freaking uh, competitor on who's number one. William Tackett, number three, our flow grappling, what, 2020 newcomer of the year, yep. what, rising yep. star of the year. Yep. John Blank uh, just lost to Wagner. Hibamar. Nogi World Champion, Gabriel Almeida, Pedro Mourinho will be an interesting guy to get in the mix. Andrew Wiltsey from Daisy Fresh, ranked number eight. He wow. won, won Nogi Pans at yeah. Black Belt. Hinaldo Jr. is ranked number nine. I think he won like American National. Oh, he won Nogi Pans as well at Black Belt at the weight below Wiltsey. They were middleweight. And, yeah, uh, those guys have a history. And huh? him, yeah, cool. they fought a whole bunch of times yeah, at the Cubs. Yeah. They fought Nogi World as well. They fought Nogi a couple times, I think. And then, Tim, we got Felipe Cesar Silva. Uh, Reed, what do you think about, about this weight class here? I mean, you know, the, the 185, this is always kind of one of the most exciting weight classes um, in UFC and in combat sports and everything like that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's highlighted by the most electrifying uh, grappler in the sport right now, in my opinion. That's Roberto Jimenez. Nobody's more exciting, I think, than, than um, Roberto. Nobody b- brings more energy and uh, and um, just uh, badass jiu-jitsu to the table than, than a guy like Roberto. Love to see, you know, he's a young young guy out there. Love to see him at the, uh, at the top there. Uh, hopefully we'll see him at ADCC soon and, and, and uh, some more who's number one events. Who knows? Hopefully he'll be on some soon. Um, but, yeah, this is a, a, a loaded card. You know, John Blank is another new guy who, who's uh, making a name for himself out there. Um, you know, Hibamar has been looking good lately. So this is a, this is a stacked one. It, it looks a lot different, though, than, than maybe 12 months ago. I, I feel like that's not a – that's a fair statement to make. I mean, yeah, 12 months ago, Roberto was – uh, Roberto's not even a black belt, or maybe brown, brown belt still. I think maybe he, he made his, his his black belt debut in February against in February. Keenan. So I mean, he definitely wasn't known as like some. I mean, he's he's gone out and beat Wagner and Nicky right at, at Nogi at this point too. So he's up there against the pros. Corey, anything stand out to you looking at the, at these rankings here? Yeah, we, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about Ronaldo Jr. today. So just one more thing here, but I can't think of a match in the top five that I wouldn't love to see Ronaldo against. True. Um, you know, he's he's a great match. We had him against Wagner, at, who's number one. Uh, six, seven months ago, still a great match. Him against Roberto, him against William Tackett, him against John Blank. I would love to see him against Andrew Wilty again, too. Mm. Him, him against um, William Tackett, that's an interesting one. That's definitely... Ronaldo versus William Tackett sounds crazy. I feel like, if I remember correctly, I think him and Roberto might be some sort of purple-brown belt rivalry. I feel like they probably threw down a, a few times. Uh, yeah, yeah. William Tackett, John Blank's an interesting one. Uh yeah, Ronaldo versus William Tech. Any other matches here that stand out both, to you? Reed? Both those guys are so young, like William and and um, Ronaldo. About that you were talking about Ronaldo having that gas tank. Yeah, William too, right? Those like young right. guys who just literally never get tired. I hate rolling with those guys in the gym. Those like sixteen year old blue belts who just like beat me up for the entire time, never get tired. Yeah, there's a bunch of. I mean, even looking at the bottom half, Pedro Mourinho and Andrew Wiltsy are two newer black belts. Who are uh, Pedro's not even a black belt yet. Pedro's mm. the, somehow not even a black belt right. yet, but. Uh, Basically, Long time is, brown belt, though. Yeah, basically, <laughs> is and when we come to Nogi and Andrew Wilt, those are two guys that get after it too. So you talk about Ronaldo, Andrew, Pedro coming up, William Tackett, Roberto. This is an exciting bracket for a long time to come. And you even got an older guy, a veteran like Wagner. Hosha ain't going anywhere. I love that they, that like Wagner is the, the <laughs> veteran in there who's just like you know beating I mean, back the younger generation. How old beating, is Wagner? Thirty eight. Somewhere around there. I think he's double the age of William Tackett. I think William Tackett <laughs> might be nineteen. I, I think That's Wagner crazy. too fits fits in so much better in this weight class than he did at what we were calling seventy seven, mm-hmm. right? Because there, he, here it seems like his personality fits his size a little bit better. Uh, I think he can he can still rough up people in this mm-hmm. division, um, and it just seems like a more exciting, more more kind of grisly match. Yeah, and I mean for his style, the way he likes to wrestle with people and everything, and uh, his last couple matches, I believe were. They were both against top 10 guys here. This is who's number one matches, at least. He beat John Blank at the last one. He beat uh, Ronaldo at the who's number one before that. So, I mean, Reed, what what match, if you had to pick a match out of all these guys or even somebody from this weight class who's not ranked, who would, who would you be looking at it, at, at matching up here? Matching up? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick out the name Pedro Mourinho just because um, <laughs> you, you mentioned him and, and he's still a brown belt, but I'd love to see Pedro in this mix. Um, him and Roberto have had... Uh, Quite a few wars over over the years, and uh, it's another one. That, yep. So, so you could you could run that one back again. I believe both those guys have submitted each other uh, kind of a few times. So uh, that one's crazy. 
But um, you know, maybe maybe um, Pedro Mourinho versus John Blank would be a good one to uh, to do. See where those guys are at. So, you know, both kind of mid tier in the rankings right now. See see, uh, see who's got that uh, elite pedigree. I think I'll go with. They already threw down once at an event, a uh, cool event that was on YouTube in Iowa called BJJ Woodstock. A hell of a name for an event, but I'll go with William Tackett and Andrew Wiltsey. Everybody knows, you know, I make those Daisy Fresh things. I'm I'm buddies with Andrew, but they had, a, they had an entertaining match last time they went. And it's like it's two guys with uh, never any gas tanks. Uh, I think the the future of this division. I think it's guaranteed to be a fun one. What are you thinking, Corey? Who, who would you want to see throw down out of here? You know, Reed, you stole the words right out of my mouth, right out of my mouth with Pedro and John Blank, but. I'd also really like to see uh, Wilty and Wagner. I, th- I think that's just such a – Yeah. It, it's, I don't know what to think of that match. I don't know what, what we get from it. So I think it's – I'd love to just see Andrew's reaction, just knowing yeah. Andrew all this time because he Andrew's the type of guy, uh, he doesn't know who anybody is. Mm. Like he, he's, he'd go out there and wouldn't know much about Wagner, and Wagner would start hitting him in the chest and messing with his fingers. I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to see the look on Andrew's True. face. But uh, – all the all these guys against Andrew, you know, Andrew's a young, you know, that's that's what's crazy most about the rankings here is that like really from last year to you know what that eighty eight looked like, you know, to to now or one eighty five what it looked like to now is just completely different. You have so many of these young young guys, and um, yeah, it make, makes good for the future of the sport. That's for sure. Crazy good division. So go to flowgrappling.com. Check out the rest of the Nogi rankings, and uh, we have, I think, like. Eight for the men, uh, like five or six for the women. Uh, we really expanded them when we moved to these new weight classes. Uh, got pound for pound in both. So, yeah, the flow grappling official Nogi rankings. The next uh, little segment I'm going to go into is I did a, a interview with the other half. Of, we already showed Reed interviewing Craig Jones. I did an interview with the other half of the main event. This was Ronaldo calling in after his uh, training at, at Atos. If you want to go ahead and roll that clip, Tyler. Ronaldo Jr. Big news yesterday that you're going to be in the main event of who's number one versus Craig Jones. How are you feeling, man? We muted. Yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, uh, it's a big opportunity to be on who's number one again. Can't wait to be there. I like the show. I like the the lights. It's awesome. So you train at Atos in San Diego with with Galvao. You you've trained at other places. What is it is it about Atos that makes it such a special place that you guys have so many champions? Uh, basically, it's like uh, I have opportunity to to test myself against all of uh, athletes. They have a different game. Uh, I can get better at my guard passing, my guard, uh, my wrestling, everything. You know, uh, I don't I don't need to to set up a training and then come and train like I used to do before. I just come and my professor he knows what I need to improve and. I have all my teammates around to help me out as well. So Craig is known for his uh, leg lock, sort of. Uh, he's he's leg locked at a lot of people. What makes you different than other people? Like, why won't he be able to leg lock you when you guys fight? Uh, basically because I, I have a lot of people that I can train with uh, right here at the office. Uh, they've been leg locking me for like five years or more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, Greg is uh he has a good game, you know. Uh it's definitely like a danger point. And that's why it's gonna make this fight very exciting for people to watch. Uh yeah, can't wait to be fighting against him. So uh one of the things that people are obviously gonna say is you're more known for for a gi competition, but you've you've had some uh big IBJJF no gi wins in the past. Uh what would you say to people who think that uh you're better in the gi and that Craig would be the favorite in no gi? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like to be the underdog, you know what I mean? Uh, because, like, people are going to focus more on him, and by the time they want to see, like, who who's going to who win the fight, you know? So uh, every time when I fight someone that has more titles than me or something like this, I, I feel like very, very comfortable. I don't feel any pressure or anything. It's more like uh, the pressure's on him. Yeah, uh, besides, uh, we already talked about the leg locks and the, and the gi, no gi. Besides the uh, jiu-jitsu side, just on a personal level, what do you think about Craig? Is there anything you like about him, anything you don't like about him? Have you met him before? No, I, I never met him. I just uh, I watched his fight at ADCC. I was there, you know. Uh, and he's definitely like a good competitor, a person that people like to, to watch. He's always like, going with... Uh, with something different to the fight, you know what I mean? He's not the person who goes like with the same strategy every time. And he's good on his leg locks and 
actually not just leg loss, all the submissions he's been trying. I, I saw his fight against myself. And uh, that's why it's going to make this fight very excited because uh, the same way that he's going to come on me, I'm going to go on him. I'm not going to back up at all. Uh, and uh, I just can't wait. So there's always been Atos and, and the Dan Hurd Death Squad, the DDS, are basically the, the two best teams in, in no D, right? And there's always been a lot of back and forth. Galvao and Gordon, or basically Gordon and your entire team are always talking to each other online. Craig and Josh, does it does it feel a little bit different, like a little bit like a special match because you're going out and you're representing Atos against the other great uh, Nogi team out there right now? Uh, to be honest, uh, not for me because like uh, I never had anything with them. Just with Gordon last time, I was about to to show him what's up, but he didn't came. He, I mean. I don't know why he didn't show up, but it's, it's okay. But with with Craig, it's like way different, you know. He he didn't say anything bad to me, and I don't think I'm gonna say anything either. Just just gonna fight him uh, as much as I can, you know, as hard as I can. That's the best thing I can do. So obviously, we tried to do that Gordon match on who's number one before it fell apart. So is that a match that you'd be looking for in the future still? Yeah, if if he's ready, you know, I don't know his plans. I think. He's up in the gym right now. He, he's not focused on competing anymore. I don't know. All right. Uh, Ronaldo Jr. coming up in the, uh, February 26th, the main event versus Craig Jones. I'm looking forward to it. You guys are both exciting fighters. I think it's going to be a great one. Thanks, Ronaldo. Thank you so much. All right, there you have it. Ronaldo Jr., I think, still sort of trolling Gordon, saying he's ready for a Gordon match if Gordon's ready. I mean, that's basically the thing that he said that set Gordon off to, to kick it off. But, hey, guys, this will be the, the end of this uh First, sort of feels like the first episode. It's episode number 134, but this new new formula, we're going to be doing this every single Wednesday live on our Facebook, on our YouTube, on the site at 5.30 Eastern time. We have a whole bunch of news coming for for the event announcements. Uh, tomorrow will be the Nikki Ryan announcement, and then after that will be every two days. We have seven matches coming on this card. We have a new show coming that's going to be hosted by Howland Chase on Mondays. Uh, we'll be live at the same time, 5.30, called Grappling Bulletin. will be sort of like a, a news type of show. This one's f- focusing on the WNO events. Well, we do we do want to uh, interact with you guys for sure. So make sure you guys, you know, every Wednesday we'll be here. And make sure you guys, you know, give some questions, uh, talk back into the comments and stuff. Corey's monitoring that. We're, we're going to be monitoring that stuff. So definitely uh, we want to have, you know, an open conversation with the uh, with the audience as well. All right, Corey, you got anything to say before we get out of here? Uh, no, just to, to pile on Reed's point. So not only are we live on Facebook and YouTube taking comments, but you can also comment directly on the Flow Sports app um, where we'll be doing polls as well. And you said that um, the, the next uh, match announcement is coming up soon. And Tomorrow then... you'll know Nikki Ryan's uh, opponent on Thursday at noon Eastern. And then just we're going to keep keep announcing matches. Every, every two days from every there, two... just the same little formula we've had. So plenty, plenty of big matches uh, to come. You know, we do know um, all of them. So de- definitely looking forward to, to sharing that with uh, with that, all the fans. I think there's some huge, huge badass matches on this uh, uh, upcoming February 26th. Who's number one card, of course, uh, headlined by Ronaldo Jr., Craig Jones. I can't wait for it, man. It's going to be crazy. Yep. Shout out to our fourth and fifth team members here, Connor and Tyler. All right, Tyler, go ahead and kill it. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I-